Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. Time for our daily devotion. So I am jumping on Facebook and getting ready for our time together. It's a beautiful sunny Tuesday. I heard it's going to be a high of 52 today. That'd be nice. Wish it was Friday in 52, but it's not going to be. <laughs> I'm going to take a moment and wait for folks to join. As they do, they usually leave a comment. So I'll, take, I'll say good morning to folks as they do that. Hmm, excuse me. Got a few folks that are here already. Good morning to all of you. Excuse me. Good morning. Hi, Linda. Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. Hi, Shirley. Nice warmer winter day. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Jack. Good morning to you, sir. <clears throat> Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning to you. Who yours are here? Yay. Hi, Ruth. Good morning to you. For those of you that are here, I'm sorry, I keep watching vehicles that keep going by. I'm not sure why. I'm not expecting anybody to stop by today, but... Hi, Pat. Hi, Jack Tennell. Good morning to you this morning. Uh, we're going to be reading out of Isaiah chapter 65 today. So if you want to find the prophet Isaiah, the Isaiah scroll, chapter 65. That's where we're going to be reading today. 17 to 25. I read scripture each, in each day out of my out of my Bible. And this is also the same Bible that I take into you know, on Sunday morning, so I have all these texts highlighted that I preach out of, and looks like I actually used this back in 2016, on July the 3rd. Not sure what I said about it, but <laughs> hi, Diane, hi, Murray. I mean, that was four, four plus years ago. I can't remember what I said yesterday, let alone four plus years ago. <laughs> all right, let's get started. So we're reading out of Isaiah chapter 65. We're reading verses 17 to 25. Look, I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth. Past events won't be remembered. They won't come to mind. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I'm creating, because I'm creating Jerusalem as a joy and her people as a source of gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad about my people. No one will ever hear the sound of weeping or crying in it again. No more will babies live only a few days, or the old fail to live out their days. The one who dies at a hundred will be like a young person, and the one falling short of a hundred will seem cursed. They will build houses and live in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They won't build for others to live in, nor plant for others to eat. Like the days of a tree will be the days of my people. My chosen will make full use of their handiwork. They won't labor in vain nor bear children to a world of horrors because they will be people blessed by the Lord, they along with their descendants. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Wolf and lamb will gaze, graze together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. But the snake, its food will be dust. They won't hurt or destroy at any place on my holy mountain, says the Lord. Our author today is Faith Ford. Faith is from England, and her focus verse is Matthew chapter 7, 7. And it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
And here is what she shares as our devotion for today. Growing up in the London suburbs, I remember mischievous, mischievous children knocking at our door and running off before my mother had time to open it. She'd be puzzled and then upset that her work had been interrupted. When I moved to a new town as an adult, I experienced the same prank and discovered how frustrating it was to open the door to find no one there. For many years, I tried to lead my life without God's guidance. Finally, when everything fell apart, a wise Christian friend suggested I pray to God for help. Somewhat skeptical, I knocked in prayer and to my amazement discovered God's door opened to me. With God's help and the assistance of Christian friends, I got my life on track. Over the years, I have come to trust that when I knock at God's door, God will always open it to me. I wonder if there are times when I am like the children playing their game. When have I knocked at God's door in prayer but not waited around long enough to hear an answer? Does God open the door to find I have vanished? The miracle of grace is that God constantly listens for our knocking and always responds in love by being there for us. So the thought for the day, God always responds when I call. I was thinking, um, I mentioned this before, um, my great-grandparents used to have one of those portraits of Jesus standing outside the door knocking. I actually think, if I remember correctly, there's one in the pastor's office at St. John's, and it's up on top of the credenza. It was on the it was on a wall, if I remember correctly, at the church. And so I have a, a, one of those one of those portraits of Jesus as well um, at the church. I think about the uh, the idea that she has presented for us of 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 just one of us knocking at the door, whether it's Jesus knocking at the door of our heart or us knocking at the door of God in prayer, and our patience level, right? Um, the, the questions that she provides are, are something that I hadn't thought of before, but, you know, when do we find ourselves knocking on God's door and not being patient enough to wait for God to open and reveal God's will to us to answer our prayer? Have we found ourselves moving on too quickly? Or are our prayers kind of a moment where we just simply shuffle some things off of our plate onto God's big plate, hoping that God will just take care of them, right? You know, one of these things that we just come to God and we say, you know what, God, here it is. I'm going to lay it down before you, and I'm going to move right on. Rather than maybe taking the time to be present with God long enough that we might actually sense uh, a relief from that circumstance or, or a gut kind of response from God that, that fills our heart and our soul. I think when we pray and we have these kinds of burdens and, and things that are on our high, hearts and minds, that we might be better off spending a little bit of time just wrestling with it and wrestling with it in God's presence um, rather than just dumping and running. Um, that we need to spend some time with God seeking truly an answer that we can be able to understand and comprehend and live into versus, you know, maybe someday in the future God will answer this prayer, but I'm just going to leave it here right now. Right? How do we spend time with God? Because God wants to come spend time with us um, and, and for that to be intentional time that we spend in the presence of God. I'm not, I know for me, that's something that I certainly um, can do a lot better at as well. I find myself often praying for folks in our church, but I may not necessarily listen uh, for a good answer. You know, stay around a little bit and, and listen for God to, to speak into that circumstance that I'm praying for and maybe give me some clarity and wisdom. So I know for myself I need to do a better job at this. I wonder for you as well. Because the miracle of grace is that God constantly listens for our knocking and responds in love by being there for us. If we'll wait around long enough for God to respond. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Oh, gracious God, grant us the perseverance and the persistence in our time of prayer. Not only to bring to you our petitions and our laments but give us the ability to stay around long enough to listen for you. 
We ask, O oh God, that you continue to be present with us each and every day. Teach us what it means to be your faithful followers. And in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Oh, excuse me. So glad that you've joined today, friends. Glad to have you for our time of devotion. We'll be back on again tomorrow at the same time, 1145. So I hope you'll come and join me for our devotion time tomorrow. I appreciate your faithfulness each and every day. I pray that God might richly bless you as you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and I'll see you tomorrow.